Welcome to Black and Gold Today, brought to you by Ray Brandt Infinity. I'm Rachel Whitaker. The Mark Ingram guessing game is over, and joining me to discuss is Saints columnist Larry Holder. Well, Larry, signing Mark Ingram to, the, to his four-year deal really shows me that they have firm confidence in him to make him a number one back, uh, something that they haven't had really almost since Deuce McAllister when he was really a workhorse during his career. So your thoughts, uh, you think it was a good decision to keep Ingram? I think it was a good decision, and yet there's still some risk there. Uh, look, Mark Ingram, he performed like a number one running back last year. There's no question about it. Uh, they missed him when he was out of the lineup for three games, and he came back like gangbusters and, and really put on a, uh, a great display uh, really throughout the rest of the season once uh, they're running the football well. Uh, but four years, uh, reportedly $16 million maximum. Uh, it really surprises me that – the Saints uh, were able to secure Mark Ingram without him having to go into the free agent market. I thought for sure he'd want to go test out his market value uh, and maybe uh, see if uh, the pastures were greener somewhere else. But uh, obviously uh, uh, his attitude toward the Saints uh, likely changed just considering the way they used him last year. And he's comfortable with the system. You, you know, the plan is going forward. He's going to be that number one type guy. And I didn't think releasing Pierre Thomas may have played a part in, in keeping Mark Ingram, but I'm curious to see the numbers. I'm, I'm willing to bet that Mark Ingram's cap number uh, going into 2015 was probably pretty similar to Pierre Thomas, so maybe you're switching out guys. Right, the Saints definitely needing to address their own players before making any kind of splash in free agency, but now Ingram will have to keep up his good performances that he had in 2014. And somebody else now whose contract will be restructured is Marcus Colston. Um, he's likely in all probability going to take a pay cut, and that'll save some serious cap money. So, Larry, he could have been another leader lost. So how smart an adjustment was this on the Saints part? Look, I think both sides knew that something had to be struck. I've been adamant that I still think Marcus Colston is an asset. He just isn't an asset at nine and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, restructure is code in these terms for a pay cut. Uh, and both sides, like I said, were smart enough to realize, okay, uh, if I'm Colston, I'm, my value is not that high. And yet I, if I'm the Saints, I, we can't afford to lose him. And he's still a good piece to the puzzle uh, with Brandon Cooks and Kenny Stills, uh, but he's just one piece. Look, we're still sitting here waiting uh, for several other pieces to go down. Saints need to be under the salary cap by 3 p.m. tomorrow. Look, uh, that's going to happen, uh, and the Saints have been very tight-lipped at some of the maneuverings they've been doing, uh, but Colston right now is the most significant one, but I anticipate others are coming as well. Right. I think it was a great move to keep Colston uh, doing the even even giving him that pay cut, which I agree had to had to happen for him to stay a saint. And with the with the young developing receivers, a veteran presence like him is going to be critical. And we'll, we're going to wrap up with defense right after this. Designing luxury with children in mind could be a little excessive but we found the perfect balance with the infinity qx60 featuring effortless third row access welcome back well larry Turning to defense, another contract restructure was nose tackle Broderick Bunkley, and this kind of surprised me uh, because he he got he got injured last year, and I thought he was going to be almost an easy release, and they might turn toward fresh freshening up the defensive line in the draft. Larry, your thoughts? Well, he took a pay cut last year, and that typically means, all right, you're staying for one more season, and you figure 2014 could easily be the end of the line for Broderick Bunkley. But taking another pay cut, uh, I was told by a source it's a mirror image of what he did last offseason, so that's saving the Saints probably around $3 million 
and putting his base salary at one and a half million rather than 4.4 million. So uh, you look at that, and uh, he's still someone who uh, is quite solid against the run. Uh, the Saints, their run defense was probably the only thing on defense uh, that was playing halfway decent last year. Uh, then he got injured, uh, went on IR, and the run defense really took a dive. And so uh, the Saints, uh, obviously not fully confident in what they have going forward uh, with John Jenkins to to put him in that role of more of an every down guy. So I still see Dr- Broderick Bunkley uh, being able to be that run down guy. Like I said, I thought he was gonna he was he was gonna be a for sure casualty. But again, keeping keeping a veteran just for that rotational presence, you know, that could that could bode well for the Saints. Again, March 10th, 3 p.m. The key key time. Things have to be resolved with everyone. Larry, thanks so much. Thanks, Rachel. And tune in on Tuesday when we'll look closer at the Saints to-do list. Thanks for watching.